49 years old and I was diagnosed with HIV April 23rd, 2002. I am 28 now. I've been living with HIV for the last five years, diagnosed at 23. I'm 51 years old. I've been living with HIV for the last 24 years. I'm 30 years old and I was diagnosed with HIV May 25th, 2011. I am an Aboriginal woman living with HIV. I'm 41 years old and I was diagnosed with HIV two and a half years ago. I was 17. I was working at a gas station and it came on the radio that Magic Johnson was HIV positive and I thought to myself, oh poor guy, he's dead. And that's exactly what I thought when I heard that. Well, I realized that it's really not like gay men, because like, when, when it first came out, it was all about gay men. I realized that it's not gay men who get it. Um, it's everybody and it's really not a death sentence anymore, like it was in the 80s. First time I was tested, um, I had broken up with uh, my boyfriend and he was a cheater, so I figured I would just go and be tested just, you know, because I didn't know who all that he was sleeping around on and uh, it came back negative. And then of course the second time um, I was so sick and I was uh, in Sudbury and they did a spinal tap and they found out that I was HIV positive. But by that time I'd already progressed to full blown AIDS. 34 years old and I was diagnosed two years ago on July 1st, 2011. I do believe that uh, drugs and alcohol influence someone's decision on whether or not to have unprotected sex. I think in the moment someone under the influence uh, would easily have sex unprotected because it's not only convenient to say uh, I don't need one and it's just out of sight, out of mind type thing, like, oh, I don't have one, neither do you, who cares? But it's not the case. I didn't get it from HIV, from intravenous use. I didn't get it because I had uh, extramarital sex or I even had same partner sex. I read a statement, it was assigned in Monteith Correctional Facility. This was my divorce time that I got in jail. Had a big mouth, I paid for it, I learned my wording better. Um, on that sign in Monteith was, your lifestyle will be the death of you. And I pondered that statement many days, many, many days. Ironically enough, I didn't ponder it enough because not shortly, a, a year after of being incarcerated, reading that, I had one friend that lost his legs because he continued his lifestyle. And then I continued my lifestyle and I received HIV and the loss of an arm all in the same year. God has funny ways of giving you lessons. You're not fighting boy no more. I'm taking your good haymaker. Oh well, boy, you're not fighting no more and sleeping around. You need to settle down. I get this. So I took that as not weaknesses, but lessons. On the 1st of December, it's going to be uh, 24 years I've been living with that. And uh, I can remember like yesterday when I, uh, the doctor told me. He called me to the office and first of all, uh, you know, when you were young, I was with girls, I was with guys, I, I didn't know what, which one to pick. Yeah, I was uh, you know, exploring somewhere in my life. And uh, I was on the old school. I always uh, believed in true love. And, uh, and I, uh, when you're young, you, you, know, you go from one to the other. It's like they're pretty easy, you know, you finish with one, the next week you're with somebody else. And it's like, it, that was pretty much what it was. And uh, until I said, you know what? I want to find somebody who will love me for who I am and respect me. And uh, I was waiting and waiting and finally I met someone and that person, which I didn't know, he did have HIV. And uh, I said, you know what? Often people, the first couple of weeks or the first night, they go to bed with someone uh, pretty quick. And, uh, and I said, you know what? With that person, because I want, if he really like me or love me, 
he gonna wait and he can wait. I've been waiting six months before to have sexual uh, with that person and uh, which I didn't know he did have HIV. Six months later, of course, uh, we did what happened happened. I am 44 years old. I was diagnosed in 1993 and I was 24 years old. Decided to have a one-night stand and the guy that I slept with um, found out later on he was bisexual and after that I started feeling just not myself, like I was getting yeast infections and I felt like I had the flu. So I decided to stop by my doctor's office, which was close by, and I asked the secretary how I went about getting tested. The doctor had said, we got your results, and you're HIV positive, and, and I was shocked. I was informed that I, am, I was the first female in northeastern Ontario to be tested positive. I'm a fighter, I'm strong, but sometimes I can be weak. Uh, I'm human and I make mistakes but I like to learn from those and make my life better every day. People need people to stand up for them. Um, sometimes it's nice to have somebody stand up for me. This long relationship with my doctor, uh, very early on um, when I left a relationship, we had kind of set up a standard where every year I would get an HIV test because um, I learned about HIV and it hit the scene when I was in a relationship, so I thought I was relatively safe. Somewhere along the line, that communication broke down. The doctor was not testing me every year as I thought I had been. So when I stopped in for a checkup, um, he asked me if I wanted the HIV test and I said, oh, of course, thinking we had been doing it all along. Right. Uh, and when I got the call, a couple of days later, and I was in Ottawa. The, in the back of my mind, I thought, this is not good. So 